In this video, we will focus our discussion on the learning competency, describe how coastal processes result in coastal erosion, submersion, and saltwater intrusion. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to 1. Identify different types of coastal processes and number 2. Explain the hazards brought by coastal processes that results in coastal erosion, submersion, and saltwater intrusion. Everything on Earth undergoes continuous change and for that reason, everything is temporary in nature. While a number of these modifications are not easily noticeable to the naked eye, others are highly evident and have early detection, just like our shorelines. The Philippines, being an archipelago with 7,100 islands and 18,000 kilometers shorelines, is indeed facing this such inevitable change. All these coastal alterations can be associated to coastal processes such as weathering, erosion, and shift, which are the main driving forces of shoreline changes. Coastal processes are inevitable occurrences driven by nature and amplified by human action. They cause damage to shorelines through coastal erosion, submersion, and saltwater intrusion. Waves are coastal processes which are caused by wind. Wind-driven waves or surface waves are created by the friction between wind and surface water. As wind blows across the surface of the ocean or a lake, the recurrent disturbances creates a wave crest. During summer weather, waves gently surge up the shore face. The swash carries sediment. The swash slows, runs out of momentum, then slides back down towards the water. Some of the backwash sinks into the sand. The backwash has a little less energy to carry sediment down the beach, so the beach gradually grows in size with the development of a summer burn. The summer beach profile is broader and with a gentler slope. During the stormy months, storm waves carry much energy to the beach with extra energy to suspend sediments and redistribute them in the nearshore environment. Steady strong winds from a storm can push water up on the protected shore raising water levels. Return flow from this wind setup helps to carry sediment away from the shore. The summer berm is eroded away and the sands are deposited offshore. This beach profile is steeper and narrower. Next we have tides. Tides result from the gravitational attraction of the sun and the moon on the oceans. As the moon orbits around the earth every four weeks, the relationship of the sun, earth, and moon changes. At the full moon and new moon, the sun, earth, and moon are aligned. At these times, the gravitational and centrifugal force of the moon and sun combine together and result to spring tides. The spring tides are the highest high tides and lowest low tides or the greatest tidal range during the course of the lunar month. During the first quarter and last quarter, the sun, earth, and moon form a right angle. On these times, the gravitational force of the sun and moon act at right angles to one another that result to nip tides. The nip tides are the lowest high tides and highest low tides or the smallest tidal range. Next, we have sea level rise. Sea level has risen by about 120 meters since the peak of the last ice age about 19,000 years ago. Since then, ice caps have shrunk, returning water to the sea and the seas have warmed and expanded. Global average sea level is currently rising at the rate of about 2 millimeters per year. 
This low sea level rise helps to increase the rate of coastal erosion. Next, we have coastal flooding. Coastal flooding and erosion may be severe when storms strike a coast at spring tide. Storms brought by low pressure systems may give rise to a large storm surge. Highest water occurs through the combination of storm surge at spring tide. Fifth, we have crustal movement or the deformation of the Earth's crust due to tectonic movements. It can cause earthquakes which affect humans dramatically. It can cause tsunamis that can destroy coastal areas. Now let's discuss the hazards caused by coastal processes. These include coastal erosion, submersion, and saltwater intrusion. Coastal erosion refers to the wearing away of the land by the sea. This often involves destructive waves wearing away the coast. There are five common processes that cause coastal erosion. We have decoration, abrasion, Hydraulic action Attrition and corrosion Submersion occurs when the amount of sediment exceeds wave or current's ability to transport like the narrow strips of sand, pebbles, or cobbles deposited along a shoreline. Seawater intrusion is the movement of seawater into freshwater aquifers due to natural processes or human activities. Seawater intrusion is caused by the decrease in groundwater levels or by rises in seawater levels. And that ends our lesson. Congratulations! Thank you for watching!